couple numbers and only, sp you know, sp sporadically. But right, yeah. Sideboard of a lot of Jun decks. So I, I think that, I think we might be looking at a slaughter here. But this green white deck was designed to beat the uh, the, the Dragon Master red green deck, and right. it does a great job of that. These guys are all bigger. Yeah, bigger, but, faster. But they're not bigger than Desecration Demon and Thrag Tusk. Right. And th this deck is a little vulnerable to spot removal. Uh, Wisher's, Wisher's deck is loaded with spot removal. He's right. got Life Bane Zombie to make sure he can plan out his turns effectively and get some card advantage, put a fast clock down. He's got tons of removal, and he's even got Mutilate for the total blowout. Look at this card here. Yeah, Staffanim's pretty good. One Staffanim, just why not? Yeah, Get nine, you. yeah, you know, just you got Trent Reznor in the back. You know? <laughs> Ready to one out or you. All right, so we start off one drop by Heath. Sweet name, Heath Purdue. Sounds like he could be a you know nice little sports caster. Against Mike Witcher, not too bad. Locks this on is Smiter. a great start. Turn two, yeah, Smiter. Turn he's... one, mana creature. Turn two, Smiter. If he's you know, and he's on the play. This is everything going right so far. Right, right, and I see. Is that a Tristani in your hand? It's a multicolor card, which would be just... Oh, it's an Avid. Okay. He's got a bunch of... Well, actually, every card in his hand is multicolor, it looks like. He's got multiple voices, I think. He's got... Yeah. Oh, man, he's going to play two voices here? Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, we're going to see a Victim of Night in response to hit that Luxon and Sminer. Right, but this is still just gross. Oh, okay, Abrupt Decay, sure. Here comes a second. Voice I think it was a little greedy to wait on the Abrupt Decay. Because right. what if what if Purdue has a Restoration Angel? Right. Now he doesn't actually play him. Maybe he just knows. His oh, he does know the deck list. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. But normally I agree. You might as well you know, play it safe. This so is have, literally everything going out right oh, for Purdue. He's gonna whiff. I think he has Avid, like we talked about. Wow. <laughs> so we've got the turn one mana creature, turn two Smiter, turn three double voice, yeah. and plays around the Life Bane Zombie, which now misses because he's got Avid and yeah. as a follow up. This is this, is, this is literally textbook perfect. For, right, yeah. This is like the nut perfect. Exactly, and right on time, here comes a white creature. Can't touch it. He drew a Fiend Hunter. He yeah, but he's still going to wait on the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, Ooh, a block here. So we're going to have a huge elemental. It's going to be a 3-3 now, but we know, obviously, seeing his hand, it's going to get a lot bigger than that. Everything going on right now is just super good for Purdue. Yeah. So, Mike, I think he misses... No, he did not. He did not miss. Did he miss his land drop? Yes, he did. He did. Because uh, well, he's on Heath the draw. Had, Heath had four mana last turn. Oh yeah, no, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. So yeah. okay. So Mike here did not miss land drop. So here we go. Big turn for Mike. He needs to. He knows what's coming. He knows Evans coming. So he has to do things during his turn because on if he waits, voice will get uh, some, some replica copies here of elementals. You can't have that happen. So let's see what Mike can do on his own turn here. So four mana. See what Some kind of a spot removal spell. Right. I think that's. But it's it. tough because he wants to play around uh, Advent of the Worm. Right. I mean, he could say go. He'll Advent and then he can victim it because yep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks Advent. like that's his play. Right. I mean, it's no harm no foul here because he knows that he can. Uh, still oh, victim but here. he's falling way behind because this is going to be another six or seven damage on the next attack. Right. And he's getting the token. Mike's probably going to say, "Hold up." Got something Hold for you. up. Wait a minute. I got something for you here. And he does. Wait, let's shift the turn? Not. Uh oh. Alright. Uh, Wait, does he just not have a spot removal? Spell? He has a victim. I saw it in his hand. Is he just waiting because he's going to victim the voice because his plan is to mutilate, but he doesn't have anywhere near enough swamps? No, you would need a slew of sw swamps. That's a tongue twister, right? A slew of swamps. And he does not have that. So he's going to victim here. Yeah, this is going to leave another elemental. Yeah, this is just going to be a disaster. Drawing the Gavity Township 2 is not, not a super shabby draw there. <laughs> Let's you just continue. No, to pump. I mean, this is. I think Mike realized he made a mistake. Is a this is definitely the, the likes pause. of which he may never recover from. Yep, this is a mistake that he's seen. He knows it. They uh, see him chatting a little bit, and he's like, oh, all right. Trigger. Why? Yeah, trigger, please. Why? So there's another elemental. Take which it means slow. the other elemental gets to do even more damage. <laughs> yep, and then we're going to township. Uh, I think Mike might chump block with Muta Vault. Uh, I don't think it's time for chumping yet, but I don't it's know tough what. Tough way to do it. Because he's got Thrag Tusk in his hand. Right. And you know what? 
unlike the red green decks, I don't think this green white deck really cares about Threat Tusk too much, does it? His uh, guys, not a ton. I mean, it's, it's huge it's creatures. Like, it's huge. yeah, I mean, like Threat Tusk is a thing. Like, it would trade with an elemental and buy him some time, but right. he might just be too far behind now because of that extra elemental. Yeah, and Heath also has the Fiend Hunter for the the Threat Tusk token left behind afterward. I don't think I'd use Fiend Hunter in this matchup ever as a removal spell for a messenger or one of those, unless I'm getting the last points in because you know Mike just has. Like non-stop yeah, non spot removal. And all those creatures have come into play abilities like Thragtus. You can't afford to do that life main zombie. Disciple of Bolas. This is a pretty aggressive signing board if this is what goes down, but yeah. I, mean, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. <coughs> you know what would be nice right now is a mutilate for two. That would actually sweep the board. Yeah. For the most part, you can at least one use, or one. Did he use Gavin Township? Uh no, not yet. Oh, so it wouldn't. Yeah, because he doesn't have a melee for three. That's a woodland cemetery, not an overgrown town. Right, yeah, I was actually just wondering because I guess he's planning to play the second advent in his hand just to really put the brakes on, you know, on Mike here. Just, yeah. Wow. Uh, this is just, just too well, much. I mean, it's. See, fool me once. Here we go. Damage. See, fool me once. Can't fool me twice, right? Wasn't that a brush yeah, line? Fool, fool yeah, me once. Yeah, yeah. Can't fool be fooled me once. Again. Sh shame shame on, on Texas or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's something like that. <laughs> Yeah, fool me once, shame on me, you won't fool me twice. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. The, it was, the exact quote. It was something real, uh, it was clever. Very intelligent. Yeah, I like that guy. Real, real funny guy. All right, so we have Feed Hunter here on Scavenging Ooze. And just give Yeah, me Paxa. Did you ever see when Bush was talking about the one finger victory salute that he got when he got off the plane? No. Oh, it was hilarious. I'll give it to George White. He's a funny guy. He's a funny he guy. He was talking about how, uh, how he had just gotten back to the States and um, when he was getting off the plane, uh, he was welcomed um, with the uh, an awful lot of people were giving him the one finger victory salute. Oh, I like yeah. it. Uh, and, at least you, you can pick fun at yourself. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah, dodge yeah. his shoe pretty well. I remember that. <laughs> yes. He has a yeah. ninja like uh, kind of like reflexes. <laughs> one of my favorite reactions ever was John Stewart after showing that clip. Yeah. You know, he just had, he's like, okay, I'm gonna have to tip your tip my hat to you, Mr. President. That's actually funny. <laughs> that was real funny, actually. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Oh, uh, also. Uh, we have a couple preview cards, a couple spoilers coming out, and um, since we're going to be in the midst of top eight action, I uh, direct you to StarCityGames.com to take a look at them, and we're definitely going to address them further tomorrow. We're going to see if we have time today to, to mention it a little bit, but tomorrow we're going to get real deep inside the, the spoilers there and talk about it. How so far? Far deep. Very <laughs> deep. Absolutely. No comment on that. So right. we've got The Rock. Uh, on the play this time, right? Yeah. Um, what's he hoping to draw? Uh, Life Bane Zombie times two in a row, I think. Like a good mix of removal, right? Right. A Doom Blade on turn two and some Life Bane Zombies. Yeah, well, well, before we start this next game, let's do our first round of trivia. Um, you want to win some SCG Premium? Three months of SCG Premium? I mean, if I'm watching, I do. Yeah. Because they can't read. They can read me, but they can't read you. They're correct. They need to read both. Yes. And they have both and sides. We got, of the we, we got that p p p poker face, so we're like hard to read. <laughs> yeah. So if you can answer this trivia question correctly, tweet at us at SCG Live and do all that. We're gonna need hashtag SCG Premium. We're gonna need the answer. We're gonna need all that. Plus, you're gonna have to want to win. Right. Right. Yeah. So the first trivia question for three months of Premium tonight. Uh, we saw. Adam Prozac playing an exotic, uh, a little exotic deck today. Yeah. Um, what colors was his storm deck that he played today? What colors? What two colors? Well, that's that's even a little bit more information. Well, perhaps too much information. But if you saw what two colors uh, Adam Prozac's blue red deck was today, tweet at us at SCG at SCG Live. Use hashtag SC, uh, hashtag SCG Premium right. and let us know what two colors Adam Prozac's deck was today in his swan song before he goes to work for Wizards of the Coast doing some R&D stuff and making the magic happen. Making L the magic itself. Literally. Yes. Right. Literally. Literally, figuratively. And uh, let us know. We'll be back with a winner after this next game, which at the pace the first game's going, uh, might be over before you actually get a, you know, finish 140 characters. Right. We gotta make sure it's quick. Hopefully, we see some uh, um, some less explosive start because I kind of want to see the Rock Deck's removal suite against the kind of longer mid rangey green start that he could have. Now the advantage to this match being over in one and a half minutes right. is that then we have time to watch them on a red deck. That's true. That's, That's true. true. That's true. Nothing more in this world I like than mono red, let me tell you. 
Jeez, tell me how you really feel. Great deck. All right, so we have a cyborg put on the screen here for you for your. Did viewing you see pleasure. the Esper deck that finished top sixteen? Uh, was there an Esper deck? No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you, please. Wrote, you wrote me into that one. <laughs> was there one? Was, was please? <laughs> Oh, poor Esper. No, there was definitely one in the 04 bracket, though. Yeah, I know. I, me and him were talking earlier about <laughs> strategy, card strategy. Um, Esper, mark my word. No, never mind. All right. So let's look at the sideboard here. Uh, change the topic. Primeval Bounty. What a sweet card that is. Yeah, right? and that card's been seeing a lot of play ever since, uh, basically ever since it's come out. And now, it's most often been a sideboard card out of Jun decks that are looking for, you know, an alternative way to have some board presence that isn't as vulnerable to removal. Right. But uh, it actually works in this Archangel deck too, as, you know, giving them another way to go long against somebody who has a right. bunch of sweepers. Um, and we might actually see it in this matchup, you know? It's definitely better than uh, uh, Debra's Chant, I think, that Jun tried it at the beginning. Because that was kind of a risky card where you remove 10 cards in this, you know, Detention Sphere. Where this card has in play capability immediately, play it, play your land, get some action out of it. And also, you're not really getting blown out by getting it removed. You're not losing a lot. Of big well, and just Dead Bridge Chant is, I mean, it was a decent card, but it's a lot worse, obviously, in the world of Scavenging Ooze. Yeah, yeah, definitely, too. The graveyards are not safe nowadays. Well, particularly you, since you're you, using the ooze yourself, you know? Right, yeah. And if you ooze it, you lose it. So then you can't actually. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I got the long con there. <laughs> <laughs> the setup. Uh, how about Pay No Heed? What about that card? Pay No Heed. You don't see a lot of that one. No. Yeah, I'm sure there's a nice pun for Pay No Heed somewhere in there. Uh, pay No Heed to Pay No Heed. <laughs> don't pay any mind to it. I'll leave the yeah, pun Yeah, so we're going to take a nap. <laughs> and after we wake up, we're going to come back. Uh, obviously, cyboarding has lasted significantly longer than that last game because right. that was a thrashing. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, Wish we didn't stumble on his mana or anything, right? Like, yeah. He had it was just... The perfect. Like right. That's he made one Purdue mistake wants. with the victim. Um, yes. But I don't think that would have ended to change the result of well, that match. I mean, that's everything Purdue wants. He wants to win the die roll. He wants a mana creature on turn one. He wants a three drop on turn two. He wants multiple voice of resurgences, and then as a result, like being zombie whiff. Right. And you know, he could have played the. He could have just waited and been like, I want to do more damage with my advent of the worm. Mm -hmm. Why don't I just pass instead of playing the two voice resurgences? But the way he did it, played around life being zombie, and he got rewarded. Right, and he got a free elemental out of it somehow too. I bet he was shocked to see that happen. So that's always ha that always can be a scenario too. It's not like it's easy for us up here in our ivory towers to discuss not to make mistakes. But you know, you play voice of resurgence because that's a mistake prone card for your opponent. I mean, how often do you see his orange charm being used? You're like, oh yeah, rats, elvish you know. mystic. So already, Purdue back to his wily ways. Mm -hmm. You think this time Wisher's thinking to himself, maybe I should just kill that, no? He decides nope. to sign in blood, which is better on the play, you know? Right, definitely. Doesn't have to discard at least. What do you think about that card? Do you board that card out in certain matches, maybe against red or the super aggressive decks? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes. I think I yeah. would. I think it's definitely a four of is a tad too much against these decks here. It's, right, so. I mean, it's, it's pretty good in ma in these the, against green white though, where like each of your spot removal spells can hit so hard. Right, right. You need a way to get a, a little bit of an advantage card card wise. Here's the captain of the hitting hard team here from green white though. Yeah, and he chooses not to make a to make a pair, um, which I think is just real good because he wants to make relationship with something that actually you know hits a little bit harder. Right, right, right. Next turn, which you know he'll still be able to get in for double strike the first time. Yeah, the pilgrim is not exactly a uh, heavy handed gentleman there. All right, uh, we have the Paladin abruptly uh, removed from play. Yeah, and wisely doing it on his own turn to avoid uh, sideboard shenanigans like, you know, ready willing mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, mostly just ready willing, but, you right. know, might as well play around it. Right, definitely. You know it's there, play around it. Yeah, and if you didn't, then you should have. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so we have basic land, basic land, basic land in play. I like it. Taps two for a voice. Um, yeah. Sadly, no he, is, he is out of green because if he had more green, I see a scavenging ooze in his hand, which he cannot cast. Um, Wait, so is that Avison's Pilgrim? Yes. Yeah, that's Avison's Pilgrim, not Elvish Mystic. Perfect. Yeah, and he actually can't cast Advent of the Worm either. Right. That's tough. Yeah, so he's going to need to draw a force here, all natural. All right, another abrupt decay. So we're just killing things, you know. One for one. Uh, Brook Decay on the old. That's not, that, to call that a one for one, I think, is a loose use of the term <laughs> one for one. But. A one for 0.75? One for half? Yeah, I would go with one for half. One for half, okay. Well, let's see. Mike does not have a follow up with that. 
And like you said, I mean, uh, oh, I don't know about not having a follow up. Right. That's uh, green mana. I think you just main phase advent here, right? Just so you can bring the beats even harder. Yeah. Then you're attacking for four. You're not tricking anybody with this deck. You we, know, if you pay two lives, they go. You know, we know you. We know you. The jig have. is up. The jig is up. It's time to play a main phase and get some more elemental damage in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. All right. So. He's, well, oh, no, oh, you can play two else. guys here too. No, that's fine. Both are fine. Both so, is okay. Yeah. Guy, guy. I think he has advent and advent I and don't know. something. Well, maybe not. God, I don't know about all this. Maybe he's playing around. Oh, okay. Removal spells. And... Yeah, smart. Look at this. Who would have knew? Mm -hmm. Heath Purdue. The correct crushing play. Okay, so he's going to gain a life for, for kicks. Remove a creature from the graveyard. And then we're going to hit only for three. So that's, uh, I, I mean, now, at least, you know, from Wisher's perspective, at least he's got a little bit of life to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, because like if he drops a Thrag Tusk right now, he's actually not in the worst shape. Not at all. Alright, so it looks like he has another removal spell in his hand. Vraska. That was that's his big gun. Right, he's got he does have Thrag. He has Thrag, Vraska in hand. And then he's got But he doesn't have the land for the Thrag Tusk. Right, so we're gonna settle with a, a demon. Yeah. Desecration Demon's pretty powerful in this matchup. It yeah. actually is bigger than all the creatures. Now obviously he's got a lot of fuel he can sacrifice to it, but um, if Wisher's got, you know, a fair bit of removal in his hand, this Desecration Demon will put Purdue on a pretty short clock. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at the spell section of his deck, and, uh... He does have Celestia Charm in the sideboard. Sideboard, yeah. And then his main deck is just important to, to notice here. Zero spells. All creatures. We are 100% creatures in our yeah. main deck. Advent of the Worm, the only technical oh, yeah. spell, Sorry, and it just does. makes a creature. That's right. all it does. Yeah. You tricked me with that one. But uh, Sludge and Charm is definitely an inclusion here because you know that Mike is bringing in. Um, okay, so he doesn't have Garrick too. So yeah, but Garrick just makes tokens too. It's right. literally just all guys. Okay, so yeah, so two Garrick, uh, four Advent, and then creatures. Four Archangel of Thune. Man, that's such a sweet card. Oh, yeah, no, I think once you Archangel of Thune, you might as well go all in on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a card like Thragtus that obviously Thragtus, not excuse me, not Thragtus, Thunderball Hellkite received almost no play on its birth here, and Archangel of Thune kind of is following suit here. Actually, you know, I mean, it's it was kind of surprising. Thundermon Hellkite top aided the first SCG open it after it was printed. It must have fall, fallen right off then because I remember that card going from $8 to $50 when people started playing that card. Yeah, so uh, I think I warned those about Arcane. Who, who could have seen that coming though? Yeah. I mean, it's a dragon. Yeah. Although a lot of dragons are good these days. It's kind of like those base set mythics. No one's going to go and buy any more base set out of print. So, you know, get those mythics while you can. So we've Make got, sure you have them. We've got the 3-3 three, three elemental, the Advent token, and the Avacyn's Pilgrim. Plenty of mana facing down a Thrag Tusk and Desperation Demon. Things are starting to slip away from Heath Purdue. He still has more gas, but it's it's going to be tough. He's got to, you know, like he can't exactly feed the demon very much. Right. And that Thrag Tusk is going to soak up so much damage. Yeah, definitely. And I think, which, which do you think you block here? I think you, I think you block the elemental. Really? Yeah. I think that the the worm is uh, going to be the same size as the elemental, if not a little bit smaller. I think because your only way you can lose this game is be, if Heath unloads his hand and just has more guys. Because Mike's just rocking a Vraska. He can just spot removal of the worm the next turn too, you know? Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter because we know he's playing next turn. He's going to Vraska kill the other one, so... He does kill the the uh, the elemental token. Yeah, I think the upside is is minimal, but either one is fine. I think. Classic both is okay. Is classic both. He could have paid no heated there and uh, saved his guy if he had it. So. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> thinking that paid no heat is coming in in this matchup. <laughs> no, it's for bonfire. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It prevents all damage from a any source, I believe. Yeah. So, Heath aware that bonfire is a menace. Has a sweet. Oh, he drew a disciple. Yeah, I don't think Bonfire. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're not talking about this matchup, just in general. In general, yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I don't think Mike is going to be stomping ground and then uh, Bonfire anytime soon, but. That, I, think I, mean, I also didn't think I was going to see any go for the throats in this tournament. That's true, so yeah. You never know. Yeah, a go for throat did make a resurgence in this top, almost top 32 or whatever. So here's Vraska. <laughs> you're just going to nail that worm token, right? Yeah, definitely. You have to assume if you're Mike that he has another advent because he missed a land drop oh, a couple lands ago. And either A, he's just this mad bluff in here, or just has a bunch of spells that do nothing. 
I, you have to put him on Abbott here. Yeah, but it's okay. You just don't attack with your beast. You right. attack with the Desecration Demon, and you're in good shape, right? Uh, well, the, the Abbott has trample, so you'll be able to get through the beast. Oh, I know, but you're just not going to throw your beast away. Oh, yeah. What I mean yeah. is you don't just throw the beast into the Advent. Right, right. Do you even attack with Demon here, or do you force him to set the Pilgrim as a rule? Who cares spell? about Vraska? Yeah. Not oh, even. I would attack with a Demon. Don't be a punk. <laughs> Heath could tap the Demon anyway if you really wanted to. Yeah. And besides, you got Heath down to 13. Hit him for six more. I think he's going to go the... Uh, Removal route. I think he would you do you oh. want to trade six d damage for a 1 1? I don't know if you want to do that or not. For a 1 1? Yeah, he's uh, the absent pilgrim that he's going to sack here ultimately. Is it worth uh, the yeah, six damage? Yeah, I mean, the six damage, I mean, would have done the same thing next turn. Right, yeah. Except his life total is lower, he's got less options. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm sure that it's close and there's a 50% chance it's the other way. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Playing big things in Who can him. tell? Who actually has time to look ahead in magic? Right. I think that's our job, but you know, whatever. Good enough. We can just look at. We can just live in the moment. Let's live in the moment. So in the moment, green white here, plotting, planning, scheming, trying to figure out how to get through this army of huge things. So he's going to tap for mana. That's a clear. I'm going to sack this guy moment. No other reason to tap the pilgrim here unless you're playing second to the demon. And this might be actually genius because we're, he's going to just spend a full turn killing that Varaska, which is not exactly very threatening. Increasing the demon's size, actually, in the, in the long run. So actually, I think you net a little bit of damage here. <coughs> so Varaska is attacked. And super dead. So we have an auger, we, excuse me, we have a Disciple of Bolus in hand. Do we play it and draw seven cards? Uh, I mean, that's pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to No, no, you get a, that's a lot of life, but that demon is actually getting the job done, though, right? Right. I mean, I guess it depends. Do you think you can win with the board? He actually looks behind enough on board that he might actually just have to disciple. Yeah. I mean, first you attack, though, right? Right, definitely. But, I mean, that is a two... I guess it's not a two-turn clock, because it's really just going to eat some stuff. Yeah, I think you I think you sack it. I think Mike's deck is good enough. He could draw seven cards and just be fine, you know? It's hard to lose after drawing seven. This is going to be a b Oh my god. Wheel of Fortune me. Yep. I like to draw seven cards. I'm not going to lie. So, incoming. Slew of cards. Oh, I see. Spell, spell. Two spells. Oh man, he drew a lot of land there. He actually drew quite a bit of land, but he has multiple disciples again. I'm not sure what else he drew. It's pretty hidden here. Lots of land, though. He drew lots of land. So this could this could be bad. Maybe he should have erred on the side of caution. I like well, I don't know. hindsight, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but how, how far is he actually getting? Because, like, the Pilgrim can just tap the Demon, yeah. and then he bash for eight. And then what? You know, what if he throws any any spell? You know, yeah, like, you're he needs right. to be moving forward. I, would, I mean, I don't it's, know. it's clear to draw seven there. I just, Maybe. I'm Maybe just a little not. Sad, a little sad he drew a whole bunch of land. So let's we'll see what we can do with it. It's not over yet. No, he has two disciples in his hand plus something else. He had drew at least three or four land. Well, and, and the disciple and the beast can, can combine to kill the worm. I mean, he's got a huge amount of life to work with, right? Right, yeah. That scavenging ooze is definitely a problem. He needs a... He needs, he needs a removal spell for that. That, right. that much is certain. All right, here's Mutavolt, and he plays a Life Bane zombie. Anything? Yep, Pilgrim. It is Avacyn's Pilgrim. Okay. So, so he removes the demon. The ooze begins to grow. Yep. Um, God, is that two disciples and five <coughs> land? Four yes, land? he drew miserably for those, so. Interesting. It's going to be a challenge. Yep, luckily... This game has taken significantly longer than the first game, though. Oh, yeah. We have a match here. So Heath down to pretty much his board, you know? Down to no cards. Let's see what he drew here. He drew something. This is this a Trustani we're about to see? We haven't seen this. Nope. Five mana. Oh, Boom. my... Wow, that was a haymaker. God. Wow. Wisher is wishing God. that that was a... Uh, card that was in his hand when he cast that life bane zombie. Oh, what a draw! What, did he demonic tutor or vamp tutor last turn? That's a pretty, uh, pretty potent little uh, package right there. Ooh. And well, now the scavenging is instantly putting a pulse yeah, counter on everything. Everything. He's and he gets two for himself. Pretty neat little trick here. Archangel of Thune, everybody. Definitely a 
player in the aggro deck. Archangel of Thune is, is you know, no one to, to be trifle with. Right. Especially when Heath knows pretty much with like 100% certainty that Mike doesn't have a removal spell because he would have definitely killed that scavenger years on his turn. Not, you know, go for a one card that he would have cast with his five mana open if it was an actual creature there. So Mike draws, let's so see if he, something significant. He's going to need to auger dig here if he drew nothing. But man, what outs do we have now with this army of gigantor creatures? He's pretty far away. He doesn't have enough swamps to mutilate, right? No, not even close. Because that ooze itself, or that worm is a 6-6. Six, six. I don't think he has six swamps. Let's see, mutable a bunch of uh, uh, the green-black dual land from Innistrad here. It's Disciple of Bolas is a cruel, cruel mistress. Yeah. Thank you for the seven Oh, they're all land. Well, that was very nice. Tap and two. Ooze. Reminds me of when you have Garuk. And you just blow it to draw like five cards or seven cards. Even you, know, you wolf run your uh, your thrag tusk. You draw a whole bunch of cards. And yeah. And then you're like, man, I would have rather had the garuk than these eight cards that are like <laughs> six land and two dorks. Yeah. I'm sure Mike's thinking that now. But then again, against Archangel. Yeah. That and, game well, was... and he would have lost because if he's got all these cards on top of his deck, it's not oh, like he's yeah, getting yeah, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. This is his, the future was grim either way. So Mike's kind of it's not over yet, though. Yeah. He's he's thinking about his options here. He's. 21 life is a little bit of breathing room. Right. Maybe a double mutilate in his future. Maybe. You can draw some cards with Disciple. That'll do it, right? Oh, this guy is Intimidate. Almost forgot. But there's a massive amount of lifelink about to happen on the other side of the board. Lifelink from Archangel. Life came from Scavenging Use. So any damage Mike does is going to be negated. So he's pretty much down to, if, let's take a look at his list here. He needs to do two mutilates in one turn. I mean, I mean, he could he like he could putrefy here and mutilate, but I don't see he's going to take an absurd amount of damage. Well, so hold on, hold on. He's got an ooze of his own, right? So it's not like he's going to take that much damage from that ooze, right? Yeah, he's going to just like he can empty the graveyards right now, right? The, pretty much, he's going to face down next turn. Let's see, he's going to take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's more than half his life total is going away this turn. Yeah, which leaves him almost half of his life, right? Yep. So here, Story checks out. Yep. This uh, checking half your life total. Yep. Good. So 24 here. He's going to play a disciple. He left less swamp swamp open. So what do you think? Does he play? I was going to say if he plays this, he left swamp swamp open. Yep. Okay. So there are no creatures in the graveyard. So he's safe with that. He has to leave swamp swamp open though. Right. Yeah, because he used all his green. Yeah, he Dude. doesn't have enough mana for disciple yet. But I think depending on how next turn goes, he might be on the... Because he's got like five swamps in play? Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. Things went from from bad to worse. Did, did yeah. we miss him picking the cards that he no, wanted dude. to draw? Or? Well, so, oh. you know, we have Silverblade Paladin makes a relationship <laughs> with the Archangel of Thune. So we get and, counters from the first strike on everything. Yeah, and then counters again. After, and everything is the benefit, you know, everything gets the counters for their first round of damage right. also. So this is going to be a, definitely more than half of his life. Total. Yeah, I've, I've crunched the numbers and Mike's going to take a lot of damage here. Yeah, those, those are some pretty specific numbers. Yeah, I specifically calculated a lot. Is yeah. a lot a number? It's, yeah. it's a vague number. It's a good number. I know that a lot is a cute little creature that is uh, fuzzy and, and worth having. Uh, is it? Yeah. Mm. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right so Heath is just I think he's just kind of sitting down excited counting all the damage he's about to do counting the damage counting the SCG points right counting the counting dollars the yeah he's just absolutely he's, he's just figuring out a way to spend all them dollars he's about the to one thing here. he's not counting is Adam Prozac's storm count right because that's certainly not happening anymore that actually was probably more damage than this one what was that 75 you guess it's like 72 yeah. in the same ballpark yeah that's a lot of damage yeah it's definitely more than this yeah <coughs> all right so here comes team trample and flying yeah i mean it's only 16 damage if he takes it so there's no i actually i mean counting the fact that he's actually going to block right you know this is this he is didn't send the boys in because he didn't want to trade his ooze and that's understandable um He's gonna have his his uh, his worm can be killed here by the no. double block. So no, but that'll kill both the ooze and the disciple, which right. will let him ooze even more. Yeah. But, and it's not like his life total is so high that you know I mean Purdue's down to five life. Right. It's about he to needs, go pretty needs, high right here though. 
Well, yeah. There's yeah, me. that's mostly because of all the life gain. <laughs> it's about to go berserker bananas. Life Link is probably one of my favorite creature abilities. Eh, it's my favorite one, yeah. actually. Life Link is up there. It's one of the greats. Yeah. You know, I think, like, I mean, I still, I, I'm still looking forward to the day that Magic finally makes the forbidden, the forbidden Trinity Force creature, which is the three greatest keywords, you know, out of the normal keywords. Mm -hmm. Life Link, ha uh, Haste, and, f uh, and Flying. Flying, Life Link, Haste. I mean... So just tack a lifelink on a lightning angel and we'll be happy, right? Well, I mean, that has vigilance. I'm talking just the, the oh, actual... Oh, yeah. Let's replace it. That's fine. You make yeah, the I'm same card. The minus for, a, I'm talking visuals. the forbidden keyword. The, okay. the forbidden trinity force of lifelink, haste, and flying. Okay. You know why they've never made a creature that has exactly those three abilities? Because it's too cool. Like, once you do that, how can you ever do anything cool ever again? Right, yeah. like, that is That is like purple. Like once you do that, once you open that Pandora's box, there's no, un, you know, there's no putting it back. It's, right. You know. People are gonna always want their flying, hasted lifelink creatures. I know I will. I don't care what colors that is. I'll play that. Well, I guess it would have to be specifically blue, white, red, right? No, 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 no. Definitely green not. Green can be. It can be black, green. I guess. Fl black. Really it could be mono black. Oh. If with, I did a, if I, if I was doing a set where the Baron made a return, Baron Singer, yeah, Baron von Singer the second, I would def, like, I would totally make <laughs> that guy like a flying lifelink, uh, you know, flying lifelink haste. Yeah. How yeah. sick would that be? That'd be pretty sick. Haste is definitely not a real uh, black ability. There are some black hasted creatures. Oh there. yeah, no black is not too black many. Has Very haste. few. Black is third in haste. I mean, yeah. obviously number one is red and number two is green, but yeah. black is three. Yeah. It's true, it's true. So we have... Black does everything, at least number three. You know, except killing enchantments, yeah, you're right. Look at all those counters. Yeah? No. Yeah. So what's the plan here? Because, <laughs> like, that ooze is like a 11-11. An like, we're not even close to, like, at this point, there's just silliness going on, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Wisher's having a good little laugh, but he might as well, you know, his back's against the wall. Right. You know. As discussed prior, Mutilate's cool and all, but this is where we wish it was uh, all the lands in play. <laughs> oh, Still wouldn't even scratch the surface here. All right, so we're going to draw some cards here. Miracle Terminus. Don't, yeah. Not happening. No, this is going to be a tough one. Well, uh, it was definitely a good run for Mike Wisher. Yeah, I mean, um, he, he did well. Wow, I mean, and here we thought that the rock might have the advantage, but... This has been a brutalizing right. by uh, Heath Purdue's Green White Archangel Agrodeck. Such, such a series of plays that led to this, too. He had to whiff on a disciple, seven cards. Yeah. He drew two disciples in yeah. five land. That's Absolutely. just absurd. Absolutely. Uh, Heath had to top deck Archangel of Thun to make his army you know, potent. Otherwise, he could just trade all day and then draw cards. And then, when there's even just a slight glimmer of hope, Mr. Paladin comes in just to double strike him out of the game. So there's a Desecration Demon a day late. <laughs> Yep. So it's about 17 years late. It's kind of like your kid's already grown up, gone to college, and now you've arrived. This, that's how late this is. Super, super late. Card draw Yeah, here. it's tough because Purdue doesn't actually have any creatures smaller than Desecration <laughs> Demon. So, like, sacrificing anything to it's a little silly. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess, you know, yeah. it's possible that sacrifices must be made. Yep, so maybe he draws a card that... We'll go right to the bin here. And if you sacrifice like a creature, you get to eat it with the ooze and pump everything again. Yeah. Um, so he drew something. He's just having a good so time. So we have an update. It sounds like Andrew Tendrum continues his undefeated streak yep. uh, with black-white control advancing 2-1 over Matthew Moreno's big red deck. All right, uh, so that leaves black-white here. We didn't get to see the big red, sadly, but... Um, also, uh, by the way, for anybody at home uh, in the market for such things, um, you can go to StarCityGames.com and check out the uh, the new... Uh, the, the new, like, the previewed cards from PAX are available for pre-order there, including Elspeth, Sun's Champion, the new white Planeswalker. Oh, it, man, yeah, I'm just Yeah, for, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, it's four white-white, uh, so six mana this time. For an Elspeth, it starts with four loyalty. Uh, its first ability is plus one. Put three one one white soldier creature tokens under the battlefield. You know the uh, the second Elspeth's minus ability. Right, that's, that's actually plus, plus ability Ooh, here. I like this card. Yeah, no kidding. And so yeah. the second ability is minus three. 
destroy all creatures with a power of four or greater. Ooh, I know. That's, that's good stuff. How fantastic would that be right here? Oh, that'd be know? great. That'd be great for anybody. Yeah. 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 We'll see and, so then, here. and then the ultimate minus seven. You get an emblem with creatures you control get plus two plus two and have flying. Which, given the fact that you activated the plus one ability three times, is you know thirty damage or whatever. It's like literally millions. Can so. I can I say openly I love this card? Uh, I can I I would imagine that openly you would love this card. This, this card is, is fantastic. Yeah. Obviously not a four of here. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe it depends, right? Like it's, it depends. It's uh, definitely it's like, always six cost and cost is a little bit might. much, but that card has an incredible board presence immediately. The fact that it oh, flamed yeah. on Kabu's as a sort of Wrath of God where it yeah. comes into play, you know, but it also has just a huge token making presence. Oh yeah, that can take over some games. That's going to be an interesting one to Any watch. Any planeswalker that can protect itself. Passes rule number one of Planeswalkers. Oh yeah, I thought that was the cost four. Oh well, that's that that's makes rule him, number two. That makes them broken. All right. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, being able to protect yourself makes it, it separates it from the Johnnies of the world, if you will. If I can uh, talk about my play a little joke on myself from previous here, but like making three tokens as a plus is pretty potent. Uh, I like that. So Wisher throws away his disciple. As you can see, Heath Purdue has significantly more dice on the table than Wisher has. Uh, cards yeah um, so this is this is the end of the road it reveals that is not a great hand so uh, Mike Wisher hell of a run um, finishes uh, fifth with the rock Heath Purdue advances to the top four with his green white Archangel aggro um, man you know what there's another there's a new legendary land uh, Nykthos shrine to Nyx which is available on Star City games it's uh, a legendary land that taps for Carlos and it has two in tap choose a color Add to your mana pool an amount of mana uh, that, that like like how much devotion you have to that color. So you can right. be like 